When we base our assessment of an interaction on how someone responds rather than what we say, we're giving away all of our power. Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Kira Wackett. Thanks for joining me for another video as we work to empower and equip you with the confidence and skills to write your own story so that you can live a life on purpose. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the shift we can make to the way that we think about and view our interactions with others that will allow us to feel a greater sense of confidence and fulfillment in our lives. It's a subtle shift and it's vital to our sense of self and connection to and in this world. We focus so much on how others may or do respond to us, taking responsibility for their reactions and emphasizing it over our own requests. But the fact is, how someone else responds is out of our control. And whether or not we get what we need or want in that interaction is actually less important than being willing to put the need or want out there to begin with. Assessing the success of an interaction or experience based on someone else's response puts them in the primary role of your story, giving them all of your power. They become the author and you become an accessory character. If I ask for a raise or pitch a project proposal and it's denied, it doesn't mean I failed or I'm not deserving of more money or the opportunity, the project was dumb or that I was in the wrong. It just means I didn't get a yes. Perhaps I have an opportunity to develop my copy or presentation skills better. Maybe there are factors within the company that prohibit a raise, or it's an indication that my value may not be celebrated there the way that I had hoped. Could I have a great idea, but maybe I proposed it to the wrong audience? Let's think about this in another way. If I articulate a need from my husband and he doesn't follow through, or vice versa, it doesn't mean that he doesn't love me or that I need to just let it go and be okay. It means that he isn't able or willing to give it to me or that he needs help to provide this in the ways that I need. By making this reframe, it opens the door for connection to learn what's getting in the way of meeting the ask. From there, I can respond to the data rather than react from a place of shame and assume that it's because something's wrong with me. One of the primary focal points in assertive communication is to focus on what you need, want, and dream of from yourself and others and gain the confidence, self-efficacy, and self-compassion to put it out into the world, nurturing it and you along the way. By shifting the focus to our ask, what's in our control, versus the outcome, what's out of our control, we stay the author of our story. We see the ask as our right to make and don't set our worth on the outcome of this interaction. We can allow for conclusions that do not make us the problem. We can see a no as a response to a request and not a rejection of us as a human. And vice versa. We don't get consumed by a yes and place our value on the reaction or celebration by others. This pivot allows us to engage more authentically in the world. When we worry about and take responsibility for how others may respond, we can talk ourselves out of communicating our needs and wants all the time, telling ourselves that we're not deserving or we're fine. We become guessers, meaning we're always anticipating someone else's reaction, and then we act as if that was the truth, rather than an asker who believes that they have the right to ask for or articulate their needs and wants, and that the other person or party has the right to respond however they choose, without taking it personally. Now, I recorded a video a while back that does dive deeper on this topic of asking and guessing, so you can decipher how you show up and make some changes to allow you to respond to different types of askers and guessers. But for now, take a minute to think about how many times you've played that role of a guesser cuddling up to your shame and talking yourself out of making an ask or asserting yourself in different settings and relationships. How's that worked for you? And if it feels anything like my own journey, I guess it feels lonely, frustrating, and stagnating. So the next time that you're in an interaction or are considering something that you need, 
want, or dream of. Don't decide whether or not to say it based on the assumptions of how someone else might respond. Sure, think about what you know about a person or a situation to inform how and when you might say it, but not if. Instead, take a deep breath. Remind yourself that you have the right to put your needs and wants into the world and that this is the definition of success. Make space and remind yourself how someone responds is not about you and ultimately is just data to inform how we can best move forward in that interaction and in our overall lives to align with our values and to keep growing with purpose and intention. As you all know, writing things down and sharing them out loud is one of the best ways to increase our buy-in and reinforce the work that we're doing. So leave a comment below with your next steps, takeaways, and of course, any questions or ideas that you have for me so that I can continue to be the best support I can in your journey. Be sure to take a look at the video notes to access that asker versus guesser video that I mentioned and some other resources that I pooled to go deeper in this topic. And if you like what you're hearing, be sure to subscribe and save yourself the time and energy of having to check back to see if there's new content and instead get an alert anytime there's new awesomeness to check out. And if you want to stay in the know on everything Adversity Rising, sign up for my email list and become an AR Insider, where you'll get access to exclusive content and specials that I don't share anywhere else. I'll put a link for that for you down in the show notes as well. Thanks for being with me today as we work to shift our focus from how we can show up and what's in our control to what's everybody else's responsibility and in their control. Remember, you have the right to author your own story. So let's go get that pen.